Um, I'm going to play now a clip that someone someone showed me uh, this week, and I think is is very um, appropriate. It's from Gerald Kaufman in 2009, uh, and after this, we're going to speak to uh, Harda Khami. I was brought up as an Orthodox Jew and a Zionist. On a shelf in our kitchen was a tin box of the Jewish National Fund into which we put coins to help the pioneers <coughs> building a Jewish presence in Palestine. I first went to Israel in 1961 and I've been there since more times than I can count. I had family in Israel and I have friends in Israel. One of them fought in the wars of 1956, 1967 and 1973 and was wounded in two of them. The tie clip which I'm wearing is made from a campaign decoration awarded to him which he presented to me. I've known most of the Prime Ministers of Israel, starting with the founding Prime Minister, David Ben-Gurion. Golda Meir was my friend. So was Yigal Alon, the de Deputy Prime Minister, who as a general won the Negev for Israel in the 1948 War of Independence. My parents came to Britain as refugees from Poland. Most of their families were subsequently murdered by the Nazis in the Holocaust. My grandmother was ill in bed when the Nazis came to her hometown of Stashov. A German soldier shot her dead in her bed. Madam Deputy Speaker, my grandmother did not die to provide cover for Israeli soldiers murdering Palestinian grandmothers in Gaza. The present Israeli government ruthlessly and cynically exploit the continuing guilt among Gentiles over the slaughter of Jews in the Holocaust as justification for their murder of Palestinians. The implication is that Jewish lives are precious, but the lives of Palestinians do not count. On Sky News a few days ago, the spokeswoman for the Israeli army, Major Leibovitch, was asked about the Israeli killing of, at that time, 800 Palestinians. The total is now 1,000. She replied instantly, Five of them were 500 of them were militants. That was the reply of a Nazi. I suppose that Jews fighting for their lives in the Warsaw Ghetto could have been dismissed as militants. The Israeli Foreign Minister, Tsipi Livni, asserts that her government will have no dealings with Hamas because they're terrorists. Tippi Livni's father was Eitan Livni, Chief Operations Officer of the terrorist Irgun Svai Leumi, who organized the blowing up of the King David Hotel in Jerusalem, in which 91 victims were killed, including four Jews. Israel was born out of Jewish terrorism. Jewish terrorists hanged two British sergeants and booby-trapped their corpses. Irgun, together with the terrorist Stern Gang, massacred 254 Palestinians in 1948 in the village of Deir Yassin. Today, the present Israeli government indicate that they will be willing, in circumstances acceptable to them, to negotiate with the Palestinian President Abbas of Fatah. It's too late for that, Madam Deputy Speaker. They could have negotiated with Fatah's previous leader, Yasser Arafat, who was a friend of mine. <clears throat> Instead, they besieged him in a bunker in Ramallah, where I visited him. It's because of the failings of Fatah since Arafat's death that Hamas won the election, the Palestinian election in 2006. Hamas is a deeply nasty organization, but it was democratically elected and it is the only game in town. The boycotting of Hamas, including by our own government, has been a culpable error from which dreadful consequences have followed. The great Israeli Foreign Minister Abba Eben, with whom I campaigned for peace on many platforms, said, you make peace by talking to your enemies. However many, many Palestinians the Israelis murder in Gaza, they cannot solve this existential problem by military means. Whenever and however the fighting ends, there will still be one and a half million Palestinians in Gaza and two and a half million more Palestinians in the West Bank who are treated like dirt by the Israelis 
with hundreds of roadblocks and with the ghastly denizens of the illegal Jewish settlements harassing them as well. The time will come, not so long from now, when they will outnumber the Jewish population in Israel. It's time for our government to make clear to the Israeli government that its conduct and policies are unacceptable and to impose a total arms ban on Israel. It is time for peace, but real peace, not the solution by conquest, which is the Israelis' real goal, but which is impossible for them to achieve. They're not simply war criminals, they're fools. Right, I'm, I'm joined by Hada Kami. How are you doing, Hada? Yeah, I'm doing as well as can be expected with these uh, appalling events. Um, and I just want to say how very uh, fresh Gerald Kaufman's speech sounds and how relevant to what's going on today. What a pity he's no longer with us. Yeah. And and what, what how do you see the events of the, the last week? What what's what's your perspective on it? Well, I, I mean, look, in a word, I think it, I'm appalled. I'm absolutely appalled by the uh, position taken, uh, the position of support for Israel, which um, the governments of this country, uh, the United States, uh, France, and other European countries. Uh, I'm I'm appalled. It's not it's not that I support or in any way condone the, the killings of um, civilians, Israeli civilians, not at all. But it's the idea that uh, the 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 Israeli promoted um, linkage between Hamas uh, and the civilian population of Gaza, uh, and therefore, if you go to war against the civilian population of Gaza and kill them and um, uh, shut them in a cage and all the rest of it, it somehow uh, um, um, a just uh, and, and proportionate uh, reaction to what was done to Israeli civilians by Hamas. I'm appalled that these governments, which know better than that, have simply accepted and appear to go along with this fiction um, that the people of Gaza are actually responsible for what happened on October the 7th. That's the first thing that I feel. But I tell you, there's something else that I feel which is personal to me. Look, I... I'm old enough to relate that I was ethnically cleansed from my homeland in 1948. Um, although I was a child, I remember uh, how that was and how appalling it was. I do not want to see a second ethnic cleansing taking place before our eyes and with the support of the so-called international community, because that's what this is about. You want to uh, focus on what are Israel's aims. Well, I don't think they're very hidden. Uh, the Israeli aim is to uh, expel the people of Gaza, or as many of them as it can get away with, into the Sinai towards Egypt, and to expel the people of the West Bank towards Jordan. This is well known and uh, many Israelis have talked about it and would love to have it happen. Now, I see the beginnings of moves in that direction. Um, and it, uh, how can I feel anything other than uh, 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 I'm appalled, I'm really appalled at what's happened. Okay, so I wanted to, to make a few remarks about the situation, just to update people um, some 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 facts and figures. Um, as we speak now, there are 2,300 uh, Palestinian dead in Gaza, 10,000 wounded, about 800 of the of the of the people who've been killed in Gaza are children. 
At the same time, 1,300 Israelis were killed um, in the in the operation on October the seventh. Uh, Hamas um, uh, has, we believe, about 150 hostages, which it removed from southern Israel. Got to remember that this is not all the story. The West Bank, on the West Bank, first of all, Israel has imposed a complete closure, as it has done with Gaza. On the West Bank, this is an internal and an external closure, so that people from uh, any part of the West Bank can't get out uh, to elsewhere, and they can't go within, from place to place within the West Bank. So there's a closure. At the same time, 55 Palestinians have been killed in the last week, killed by a combination of the Israeli army and the armed settlers. Um, so this is where we're at with that. Now, what, what I, uh, you know, struck by and can't be said too often is what is this uh, actually, what is this war? What does it amount to? Well, what it amounts to is that um, a state, the government of a state and the army of a state considers that it is at war with an armed group. Hamas is an armed group. Whether you approve of them or don't approve of them, that's who they are. They're not a state. Now, the buildup on the Israeli side, 350,000 strong army um, against, we don't know how many Hamas fighters there are, but there are estimates there are about 60,000. Um, really? So this is, this is what the war is. This is what the war is. Now, why is it taking place? Well, um, it seems to me there are two clear reasons. The first and most important, and I'm sorry if this offends people, but the first and most important for this action on the part of Israel is to try and redeem its shattered and tattered reputation. It was severely embarrassed by being caught uh, um, uh, napping, napping uh, last Saturday. Um, Hamas was able to break through the fence and was able to get into the southern uh, Israeli communities, villages, uh, kibbutz seem and things like that, while the Israeli army was nowhere to be seen. And uh, this spelt, this tells you, this was a complete failure on the part of the intelligence services, the army, and the, and the politicians. So this abject failure, which the Israelis feel very keenly and are very embarrassed about, that, in my opinion, is the most important spur to the, the brutal uh, retribution being taken out on the people of, of Gaza. Uh, so that's, that's, that's one uh, important reason. And, uh, you know, the, the second reason is what I've discussed. The many Israelis, particularly the, this right-wing government, believes this is an opportunity, this is an opportunity to um, a, a get rid of as many Palestinians as possible, because you know that's what the Zionist project is about, getting as much land from the Palestinians as possible with as few Palestinians on it as possible. Okay, so, you know, who who is Hamas? Hamas has been so demonized. It has been so, uh, um, there have been so many attempts to make out that Hamas is the same as ISIS, uh, which, of course, it is not at all. It's nothing to do with that. Uh, the, you know, one begins to wonder if anybody knows who Hamas is. And I wouldn't blame people if they didn't really know or they're not sure what or who Hamas is with this barrage of propaganda. Hamas, and I'm, I apologize to people who know all this, but just let me reiterate, because I think it's important. Hamas is a Palestinian resistance movement. Uh, it it's, uh, was um, <clears throat> um, elected 
uh, lawfully uh, by a, a transparent and fair election in 2006 and um, is really, should be, the uh, representative uh, ruler of the Palestinian areas. Uh, that didn't go down well with um, Europe um, and with the United States, not to speak of Israel, uh, and, um, and hence uh, uh, the demonization of Hamas and its uh, prescribed terrorist group and so on and so forth. But the, what it is, is really a local resistance group. And it arises from uh, uh, Palestinians. The membership of Hamas are Palestinians. They're not people who fell from Mars, you know, as you, you'd be forgiven for thinking that it, it's a bit like that. Um, and so what we've got is a armed state with a huge army uh, ranged against a non-state actor, Hamas, and the civilian population of Gaza. That is the shameful truth. And uh, I, I, you know, have to say, living in this country uh, for nearly all my life, I am still capable of being shocked by the way that the masks have all fallen, that this country sides with the, the creator of this whole tragedy, Israel, sides with Israel against civilians uh, yeah. and the fact that other Western states have taken exactly the same position and the United States tells one all one needs to know. Now, yeah. I want to, I don't want to go on and on because I... You know, well, I was I, hoping that we could talk about your book. Um, that's what I'm I, coming I like to. to I like to plug a book uh, on here. In, um, indeed, indeed. Sorry. Now, I, I want to go on to that because what I, point I also wanted to make was even if Israel succeeds in uh, pushing out uh, thousands of Palestinians, what then? What happens then? What is the point of doing all this? Unless you have a plan and unless you think that plan will, uh, will hold. Now, I don't see any evidence that anybody has a plan here. Um, uh, Israelis don't have a plan. They just lash out and cause a lot of damage. And um, anyway, it's a lot to be said about the role of the international community and why is the United States, why has it got these huge aircraft carriers? Why? I mean, against Hamas? Of course not. This is ridiculous. Anyway, um, now, uh, in my opinion, sooner or later, we have to look to a future. We have to have an idea about where this is all going to end, how it's how it's going to end, and what we should work towards, and that is why I have been talking about the aim of creating a one democratic state for the people of Palestine and the people of Israel, the Jewish people of Israel. Uh, the one state, the one democratic state, is, in my view, the only end point to this hopeless uh, and tragic conflict. Uh, at the moment, with people feeling the way they do, I imagine that if one talks about that to many Palestinians, they would uh, they would laugh in your face. What? You know, live with these people who've done all this damage, who've killed so many of us, etc., and the same on the other side. Israeli Jews saying, what? These are murderers and terrorists and so on. But in the end, we really do have to work out a way in which both sides can live together. In my opinion, the only way that that uh, can happen and the only way that it can last is through changing the current situation where you have a supremacist, hegemonic Israel that does exactly as it likes and breaks the law and is violent and aggressive. Um, you, must, you must change 
the nature of a current state into a true democracy where the people who live there, all of them, enjoy equal rights, equal citizenship, as uh, as as is the case in all democracies um, on the Western model. And so really, um, that's why I wrote the book. And I really hope that um, people, not just listening to me now, but <laughs> everywhere, uh, can have a look at this book and ask themselves if they agree or if they have another idea, I'd love to know what it might be. I don't think there's an alternative to what I'm proposing. Thank you so much. You know what, I I think it, it's just, it's so dishonest that the, the whole situation is so dishonest that we can't, I, it's, it's almost impossible to make sense of it unless you just say, let's look at it from, like you're saying, from the bigger picture. I mean, all the details make no sense. The inconsistencies about foreign policy, everything makes no sense unless you talk about it in the way you have. So it's really helpful to, to speak to you. Um, well, thank you. And listen, listen, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity because what's been lacking, as you point out, like all the time is context. Since nobody understands, most people don't know the context. Therefore, they follow whatever, you know, is the loudest voice at that time. And this is what has been the problem, by the way, not just in the last week, but it's been the problem that I've lived with throughout my life in, in this country. No context, no history, no background, uh, just propaganda and, uh, you know, um, emotional reactions, which doesn't help anybody.